Good afternoon everybody. It's been a while since I've posted a how-to type video. Today we're going to give you the short version of making an RPM tester for use with the Carrera D124 and D132 slot cars. I guess you could use this for the analog cars as well, but you wouldn't need a controller since the power is always on. So you would just have to set your variable power supply to whatever voltage you needed to test that car. So we got this idea from our local race leader. He uses this to tech our motors before each race. Uh, I made this one. It's not as nice as his, but it gets the job done. His is much cleaner, and you can program the cars straight from the black box where I need to use a CU first to make sure that the chip that I use in lane 2 and the cars are all at full power. So here we go. You'll need the Carrera black box or a CEU. A black box is much cheaper. Uh, laser RPM checker, you can get these off AliExpress. It's a website where you can get stuff for next to nothing. I think I paid $8 for this one. A variable power supply would be good. Um, so you can put it at the power at 17.4 for the 124 cars. A spare controller. A uh, small 2-inch scrap of styrene and a sticker type reflective strip and a hole punch. Now just about everyone that's ventured into Carrera Digital has an old black box laying around. In the photo you can see in lane 1 that I've added a pad to raise the rear wheels off the ground. Then I placed a screw in the slot near the front to keep the car from vibrating forward and taking off. I then put some heat shrink around the screw so it doesn't scratch the front of the cars. There's two ways you can mount the reflective tape. You can do like I did here and I took a piece of scrap styrene and cut it into a circle the same diameter as the tire and stuck the reflective tape on it or you can just put the reflective tape directly on the side of the tire which is what I typically do. Here we have the RPM checker that we ordered online. I think I paid about $8 with shipping, so they're not that expensive at all. So in lane 2, you can see I built a bench tester for loose motors. I super glued the guide to the track, and I built a holder for the chip as well as the rear axle and motor mount. I had 10 plus motors laying around. I wanted to test them, but didn't want to have to disassemble a car each time. So this way I only have to loosen two screws to swap the motors. What you want to make sure here is that the rear wheels are completely off the track. Here you can see the motor is ready to be tested. But before you test the motor either in the bench style like this or in a car, make sure that it's already been programmed for full power so you can figure out what the actual maximum RPM is. Turn on the black box and the RPM checker, pull the throttle, aim the checker at the reflective circle so it will read the RPMs. Most motors will fall in the 3600 range. In our group, anything over 3750 is disqualified. Okay, so in this little video here, you can see the rear axle spinning, the RPM checker pointing at the reflective circle, and you can see that the RPMs are well under the 3750 and all is well. Now let's unplug the lane 2 bench checker and we will move on to doing an actual car this time. As you can see the car is in place with the rear wheels off the ground. Follow the same procedure as before, pull the trigger, aim the tester and wait for the numbers. So we have a little video showing the same process you aim the checker at the rear wheel with the reflective tape on it. Hold your checker button in and it'll give you the readout. And as you can see, this one also falls within the range and all is well here too. So there you have it with some old parts laying around, a new RPM checker or meter, whatever you want to call it. You are one step closer to achieving victory. Well, hopefully. If you found this video helpful, Please like and share with your friends. If you have any questions, please post them below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.